Hello, everybody. It's a Cinematic Heaven here today, and um, I, I want to talk about one tank, one tank in particular, the uh, Torvagen. It's actually just got announced today that it's back in black for two weeks. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, back in black for two weeks. Uh, it's going to be the TL7 and then the um, Torvagen Black. In all honesty, um, between these two tanks, the Torvagen's a really good choice. The TL7 right here is not bad. It does sport 25% um, additional silver that you can earn, so it is technically a premium, full premium tier 9 that actually has a little bit of a silver increase. If you guys are considering getting your hands on this, but keep in mind, it has no armor. It's got decent concealment, uh, but upon firing, if you are spotted, you are going to find yourself in a really bad scenario. Uh, so, yes, back in Black Mega Pack... Oh god, they're do oh god, why? It's so expensive. Ouch. Anyways, yeah. I wanted to talk about this. This is against the K2. Uh the K2 is a tier 8 heavy tank, a super heavy tank from PC. I own it over on PC. Um I enjoy playing my K2. It's actually really fun. However, it's got a really weak forehead. It's only 30 millimeters of armor, so it's easily overmatchable like this right here at 30 millimeters of armor. Um, there's going to be a couple demonstrations today. I'm going to be talking about the dual caliber rule, which is something that you're something you're going to want to keep in mind if you're going to be playing the Torvagen or if you want to pick it up. Side armor, 50 millimeters, 260 millimeters right here. We got 70 millimeters on the top plate, 250, 280 up on the top here, 180 millimeters, 90 millimeters of side armor all the way across here. As you can see, it's maintained auto ricochet, really good turret. However, against heat rounds, uh, once they're loaded, your turret against tier eight heavy tanks it is consistent across the board for 270 heat pin unless you're versing a tank destroyer or the torvagen is versing itself or you're versing like some high penetration tier eights which there are not a whole lot of them for instance like e75 ts uh the t34 um a couple other heavies that come to mind the caliban actually comes to mind but then again the caliban's shooting at you he can overmatch his top no he cannot because it's a 150 uh, you got 180 here, but then again, with the lob effect, it might be able to pin, because the Caliban likes to lob. Uh, but if you really want to, you can just lock on over here, and you're just going to lob a shell into it and have no problem there. Um, but yeah, whenever, whenever you're doing gun depression, however, you're going to want to keep this in mind. Underneath your turret here does kind of become a little bit weaker, because it's going to drop them 270 against tier 10s. They're just going to be tearing through this like butter. But if you're timing it correctly, and you're barely poking over a ridge, and your goal about that is literally like this... So you're barely coming over, and you're barely popping the tip of your head here, right over that ridge. That's pretty much all that you're going to be needing to do to be able to line that up the way that you want it to. Um, now, talking about the dual caliber effect and the three caliber rule, three caliber rule being something called overmatch. Overmatching is whenever the caliber of your weapon is more than the armor itself. So for instance, right here is an overmatch, 25 millimeters. Underneath is an overmatch, uh, the 16 millimeters. This is a 100 millimeters. So yeah, it's going to be able to overmatch that 25 millimeters of armor. But a little bit of a demonstration here. This is 71 0.7 degrees of angle and you're looking at 180 millimeters of effective armor 190 millimeters of effective armor now if we come in slightly right here uh, 138 millimeters of effective armor we're going to bring it back out we're going to look at the 180 millimeters and we're going to upgrade to the 122 that is now 125 millimeters. The reason why this occurs is because this is a 122 millimeter gun, which means the dual caliber rule kicks in. It has the same effects of the three caliber rule. This is why uh, tanks, for instance, like the IS-2 or, you know, basically any of the IS variants or any tank that has a 122 with 175 penetration, why it feels like they're pinning more often than what it feels like they should theoretically be able to pierce because of this one mechanic in game called the dual caliber rule. And the second we go back to the 100 millimeter, you're going to be looking at 180 millimeters of armor. To keep this in mind, the Torvagen right here, currently, this is against a dual caliber gun. So if we load in the dual caliber, that's 90 millimeters of effective armor, but this is 50 millimeters. If we compare this to another tank, for instance, like the 59 Patton, the Chinese Tier 8, this is now 140 millimeters of effective armor. So if you're going to be playing this tank, you want to make sure that you're maintaining those auto ricochet angles as much as you possibly can. Because once you're past those angles, your armor against 122 millimeters, you're going to find it to be extremely difficult to handle, even against 105 millimeters. 
but against 100 millimeters on the dot, and this is back over to the T10, comparing it to the uh, Torvagen as well, you can see it's still 140 millimeters. The moment that this is bumped up by 101 millimeters of penetrate, like a 101 millimeter caliber gun, is the moment that this is actually going to have a larger effect on the armor, because it's it's all about how the penetration works in the game. So there we go. Back down to the 122. That's now 94 millimeters of effective armor. If you're ever so slightly out of your proper angle, it's going to be extremely easy to pin you. However, if you're going against lower caliber guns, you can get a little bit more of a risky maneuver to be able to actually handle it. So against tier 6s and tier 7s, you can play a little bit more aggressive based upon what gun that they're going to be using against you. Uh, other than that, let's go ahead and dive into this replay. Unfortunately, I don't have any... Um, of the actual statistics from this match, but to give you a rundown, it was in the range of 5,000 damage, and as I'm being a Muppet, I was going to show you one more thing. Uh, I'm just a Muppet. Uh, so for today, I, I was playing the tank live. Unfortunately, I am tired. I only did 2,000 average W8, but I'm across the board of 4,200 uh, Unicum rating inside this tank. Uh, but yesterday, whenever I was playing on the live stream, and I played the Torvagen, I was averaging 7,591. Uh, in the course of three matches and averaging a combined total of 3,626, uh, 4,100 4, uh, combined overall. Where is it? I'm blind. It's so bad. Here it is. Yeah, 4,185 combined overall. Um, this was, this is the best match that I had inside the tank yesterday for you guys' information. Now, keep this in mind. Don't be mean to Blade. Uh, this is Blade's <laughs> legitimate first game back. We are up against Tier 9s inside this lineup here. So we're going to go ahead and hit play. We are going to skip a ton because the Torvagen only goes 32 at top speed. So it is a little bit slower whenever you compare it to others inside its own category. But with the 248 standard pin, this tank is absolutely amazing. It's really hard to deny it uh, as I am pretty sure I'm drunk in this replay by the way I'm driving already. Uh, so yeah, let, let, let's just pretend like that would never happen. I should continue the fast forward and pretend uh, that none of this occurred because it's fine. It's completely fine. Hey, look, there's Blade. Um, we go ahead, we're going to pull out. There's the Huntsman with really good gun depression that this tank offers right here. We're already in a position that almost, no matter what this Huntsman does against us, he's never going to be able to pin, even though he can not see us as of right now because we're still pulling up a tad bit. It's not going to matter because I'm waiting for him to come over. And that shot was actually straight into his turret because 248 millimeters of penetration were capable of mowing through the gun mantle of the Huntsman, which makes this thing extremely devastating. Um, and whenever you're rocking APCR and you're not using any heat rounds, I would love it if this tank had a heat round, but it probably would be absolutely ridiculous for how haul down heavy this tank is and then having a heat round of like 280 heat pen uh yeah that would be a little bit gross oh another high penetration tank that would give this thing a run for its money the t69 and the lpc uh that's 280 heat pen so it has a decent chance of going into it we were looking at the map and i was telling blade hey we should probably fall back by the way that it's looking because at this moment in time there is no one at our base so we need to pull back head to the rear uh, one thing you always want to do is make sure that you're keeping distance. For instance, if you're stuck on this map, Dulica Pass, and you need to do a fallback, a little bit of a plan play here. If you're in a three-man platoon, one guy's going to stay right here guaranteed. He's he's not going to move. Uh, depending on how your team over here is performing, this one guy is the rear guard. He's preventing anyone from coming across this main section to be able to deal damage and get behind your team to allow these guys to do work correctly. So, for that, your second position is actually going to be around the rock over here. You're going to have one guy parked here, aiming down ways. Then you're going to have your best player, or maybe your player inside of a heavy tank that feels a bit more comfortable. He's going to come around here, hit this position, do a scout around. If not, you're going to hit this house and do the repeat process. But then you're going to work on the right side, and your background player that's here at the back rock is going to move up to over here, while whoever is on rear support stays here and doesn't move. This is their position, and if they need assistance, uh, your mid-guard player that now moved up to here is capable of moving back and forth wherever he needs to go to help him out. 
So let's go ahead and hit this replay and get back into it. But for anyone that's playing this and you're wondering how Duel can pass, how I actually like to do this map, it's all about the crossfire. If you can get effective crossfires, I do believe that was a pin across the map. Unfortunately, um, the, we all know how the replay system works inside this game. It's not exactly the most useful thing in the game. I would love if they added in like an actual game replay system where it's like it, based upon my inputs that I had or like if I'm aiming or doing anything else, it would actually tell people that I was. And there's Blades coming up. We're going to be looking at the light tank here. Uh, we did put a 354. I did stay sideways to him because I wasn't really worried if I took a shot or not because for that, that for me would have been a decent trade. Pulling out. Uh, I'm getting hit pretty decent. 370 damage into Jason. So sorry, Jason. You've been hit twice by the Torvong. Absolutely amazing. And speed rush the Torvog and um, it does sport a very decent, <laughs> I was going to say decent accuracy rating at 0.44, but once you're actually sitting still and you're not moving, uh, this tank actually has some really decent accuracy because of the velocity on the rounds. So the velocity, for instance, 1,000 on your standard, 1,450 on your premium, 680 on your high explosive. The thing is, is that even though the accuracy is 0.44, um, whenever you fire and you have enough shell velocity, your accuracy doesn't have enough time to actually uh, introduce itself, I guess is the best way to put this. So the accuracy never f actually fully blooms out. And with the 2.3 second aim time, this tank is actually extremely responsive when it comes to leading shells or having anything behind you. For instance, I told Blade, hey, if you can handle that behind us, please do, because I need to get to the cap. we got 13 seconds left. I'm going to be pulling up on the right side here. I'm going to be disconnecting this camera. Let's take a look at Blade here. Uh, yeah, Blade's in a little bit of a... Um, <laughs> lots of fun. 146 damage. And for me, I turn around, because Blade said he missed. He was on reload, and he doesn't want to take any more hits. And I was like, you know what? They pulled off the caps, so let's do so. And then Blade's going to be taking on the mutts now. So, Blade's inside the, uh, is that the King Tiger? Oh, Blade's dead. Um, anyways, here we are inside this position. We're going to go ahead and pause, pull up to the front here. As you can see, from this point of view, I'm only exposing my frontal armor, maybe a little bit of the 50mm plate on the inside here where the ricochet hit, but this is against a Tier 7 and a Tier 6, so Tiger 2 that is fully upgraded with the 88mm and then the T-34-100. I don't know if he has a 100mm or not. And then a tier 9. However, that gun right there is actually the um, variant that you get on the fully upgraded T-69. So, unfortunately, he is not fully upgraded. Uh, but even if he was, based upon where he was aiming and what he was doing, it still is a difficult play against this tank, but if he was loading heat rounds with 280 heat pin, he'd still be struggling. There we go, we're going to be throwing a fire into the little poor guy there, the T-34-100 pops a fire extinguisher, so you can tell he's had that happen a lot because of how he's <laughs> what he had equipped. But it is five to nine right now, and I'm kind of relying on my team behind me to do what they can, because for me, this is all about just trying to make sure that I'm capable of maintaining this position that way the guys out there are not really stressed out. Plus, even though it's 5 to 9, um, 5 to 7 now, we're looking at three of them over here, which means that there's only three, it's, it's an even lineup down here. Three on three, this guy is taking on, the Yazi's taking on the uh, 58 Mutts, and then there's me with three people in front of me, so there's a lot of attention on me right now, and I personally don't know why these guys are still in the cab. Uh, there we go, T-34-100, we're going to put another juicy 400 damage into him. Uh, the reload speed on this, its base reload is 15 seconds, but in all honesty, this is not a tank that you want to really care about your base reload speed. The one thing about the Torvagen that really matters is just how well it holds down a ridge, uh, just how it locks it down. It doesn't matter what your reload is, it doesn't matter how much, like, what your DPM is or anything else. If you're capable of pinning shots consistently, working a ridge line, it doesn't matter how fast you're whittling down the targets, because they're not able to whittle you down. There we go, the 260mm effective plate, just absolutely making this T-54 E1 not feel comfortable ever looking this thing in the face again. Unfortunately, even the standard pin of a lot of tanks can't go through the front armor of this at 260mm. There is no tier 8 in game with a standard round that can actually pierce through that 260mm plate. And now that I say that, and I think about it, there's probably the ISU-152, or the ISU-K that can pierce through it. But that's very situational, and even then, he would probably be better off trying to overmatch. 
Uh, speaking of overmatch, there's a 70 millimeter plate right there on the top. All you have to do is aim down because we got a little bit too close. This is not a tank that's meant for brawling. It's meant for maintaining ridge lines. It is a little bit of a one trick pony. It's best performing inside mid range and farther distances. And let's see if we can get some statistics to pop up for this match. Unfortunately, I don't think any are going to pop up. Uh, no. Uh, is there a chance it could be in my profile tab? Uh, more than likely, no. Because there's a lot of matches here, unless we talk about my most recent ones, that, yes, I'm good. <laughs> These were not good at all. <laughs> they were pretty bad. Uh, originally, this morning, well, whenever I got on today, I kind of wanted to go over my Corella match that I can no longer open up inside this menu here. Uh, lucky for me, I actually did record it before I uh, closed that out. Uh, E3, every single time I'm not recording, I tend to have a good game inside this. This was actually a two versus eight scenario. And then once it hits the last section here, I'm just going to pause it and call out, uh, what is it? Cam, I bad girl. Um, that person had my back the entire game. They got the eight kills that were on that left side because I was just sitting there tanking it as much as I possibly could. So there's that, I guess. Anyways, the Torvagen is a fantastic tank. I don't see it being bad in any way. If you're newer to the game and you know you you want to go fast or you want to be like a super heavy the torvagen is not a bad choice it's not fast though don't it's not fast it goes 32 top speed and speaking of which its power to weight is 11.63 so at 11.63 um there's actually no problem with that because it's top speed at 32 11.63 is actually pretty decent with 32 top speed so you guys um i'm tired i'm beat up i want to go to bed I got three hours of sleep last night. I am just beat up today. My hands are killing me. Yeah, they're killing me. Anyways, you guys have a great day, afternoon, night, or whatever time it is for you. I will catch you in the next one, and hopefully watching this and hearing me talk about the Torvagen and teaching you guys a little bit about the dual caliber mechanic in the game. Hopefully that helps you out with later matches. And remember, stay safe, drive safe, do whatever it is. I'm just monologuing by this point. You guys have a great day. I'm out.